Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. Um, we are getting ready to go on a nine day camping trip. We go every summer up to the Sequoias and camp there for a, well over a week because my husband thinks that a week is not long enough. So last year it was 10 days, this year it's gonna be nine days. And I was starting to get everything out because we have two weeks left, two weekends left before we leave, about a week and a half before we actually leave. Um, so I was starting to pull things out, see what I had on hand, and make a shopping list to be able to go buy everything else that we need. Kids are in the background if you can't already tell. And I just thought, well, I should take you guys along with me and show you how I shop and or how I pack and just do all the things that I do because this is a pretty big event for us every single summer. And I've been doing it, oh, I think this is my 11th summer doing it in a row. Um, so I have some systems down and I'm trying to still get better out of there. So I just thought I'd take you along with me and let you see my process and maybe it'll help you out with your own packing in the future. If I had thought about this early enough ahead of time, I would have started this with a blank table so you could have seen the progression of this, but it is what it is. So I just grabbed our large folded table out of the garage and stuck it here and kind of out of the way. This is um, a nice messy room over here. And then there's the table and then goes into our kitchen. So um, this is the spot. I've normally always done this in the dining room, but things have changed in the dining room. Plus we have baby gates on, so it's not as convenient um, now. So this is my new staging area, if you will. So I just started grabbing things that I knew we wanted to bring that I had on hand already. And this is mostly food items, some paper goods. And so I'm just going through grabbing what I can out of our pantry, out of our garage storage, places like that, and then making lists of things that I know I still need to purchase for the trip. And then the kids actually help me. We have a couple of um, cabinets in our garage that we just store our camping gear in every year. And so this section here is all the stuff that was stored in the garage. So down there I have a lot of... Um, Oh, just miscellaneous things. Some of it is paper goods, I believe, like tablecloths, too, that we bring up with us, a cutting board that I have designated just for camping. Um, and so, oh gosh, I can't even remember. I'll have to show you in the box in a little bit. And then up here is more like campsite equipment um, that we bring with us. And then, and here is just some random stuff. I know I have a couple hammocks in here. There's some clothespins. There's a clothesline on there. I just threw in some glow sticks to have on hand. And then um, down here is my Tupperware of all of our utensils, um, things for cooking that I use. These tubs up here, there's two of them, the black ones, and that's what I wash our dishes in. And then this is just a bag of old grocery store bags. That's what we use for our garbage. Um, so I had just been collecting them and then stored them with our camping stuff so that we would have them on hand and that's probably not enough for us because I we also use those we have a little like portable potty for the kids that we keep at the campsite and if they are going to really be needing to use the restroom we line one of these with a paper towel and sit that on kind of line the inside of the potty so that we can just dispose of that easily um, as we need to. So this is what we have going on so far, and I'm just going to continue to go through. I need to print off my shopping list from my computer of what I've purchased in the past. Every year I just update it um, with what we need to bring, and then I'm um, going to double check my shopping list and go out and hit some more stores to supply everything, and then I'm going to start putting it in boxes so that it'll actually be ready to be put in the car. This is what's in the other box. Um, and these bank boxes are actually what I use, I prefer to use to pack everything just because they pack so nicely. Um, they're easy to get into with those lids. And um, I don't know, I just really like them. So um, I'm going to scrounge around the house and make sure that I have enough to pack all of our food and everything in so that um, they work well. Because they also fit really well in the bear boxes. And... Um, sliding them I can double stack them in the bear boxes they have there and slide them over each other I don't it's all of it just works really well together so I really like these they're a nice size they don't get too heavy because of their size and everything okay into the box so this is a skillet again I just have it designated for camping um I do not do a, I do the least amount of cooking as possible when we go camping 
Um, and so this is uh, just in case we need a skillet for something. I try to actually pre-cook as much of our food as possible so that I don't have to cook. Um, I'm just heating things up. Then over here we have um, a first aid kit that I believe I purchased at Costco. These are a couple of water bottles. Um, one is for myself and one's for my husband to keep in our tent so that if we're thirsty at night we have something um, that's not going to spill but that we can have water with. This is just an old insulated travel mug that I had from a camp that I used to go to when I was younger. Um, I don't use it that much. Um, I don't always bring it. Down here is a citronella candle that we like to bring with us. Here is a bag of whistles with lanyards. So these whistles were an idea from my mother-in-law. Um, when her kids were younger, they would give each kid a whistle and to have at all times so that if they ever got in trouble or ever got lost, they were supposed to sit down on their bottoms wherever they were and blow the whistle so that we could hear it and go find them. So this is something that we take up with us every year. Then, okay, here's a tablecloth. The same one we use every single year. It's lasted quite a while on our picnic table. Down here is that cutting board I was talking about that I just keep here. Um, there's some little plastic cups that we use. We try to use our um, water bottles as much as possible, but if we have juice or something, I like to have these little cups. I also use Dixie cups a lot, the little five ounce ones. Um, here's some more cold water, cold cups, plastic cups. Again, I don't take very many of those normally. Some TP, um, just to have on hand as a just in case. Um, we also have a hand washing station at our table, which just reminded me of something else I need to purchase. So here's some, so a couple of containers of soap so that we have soap on hand. And when I pack up everything, um, to be put away for the year, I go ahead and fill these up that that time so that I don't have to do it now while I'm doing everything else. I try to remember to do that at least. Um, and then these are just bags that I use to hang things up on our clothesline. Um, my mother-in-law had started doing this and I, my mom never did it when we went camping, um, but she just put everything in bags on the clothesline um, and so like all of your plates, your utensils, um, these types of cups, um, napkins, all that just got hung up on the line in bags. And then if somebody needed something, they could go get it themselves. So they aren't constantly asking mom, can I have this? Can I have that? And getting it from the table all the time trying to get stuff for kids. So that's just the bags that I use. I reuse them every year for as long as I can. And then some extra, I believe these are D batteries because um, the lantern we use is... Um, powered by batteries. And then I have some foil wrap down there. I mostly use that for melting chocolate with some s'mores. <laughs> yes. Um, so I think that was everything in here. And oh, other things I wanted to show you. My mom found this a couple years ago. It's a strainer um, for like doing noodles and stuff. It pops up and it holds together fairly well. So it's a portable, fairly compact, um, strainer which is nice to have because we do do pasta and then this is a set sorry my son is just banging away over there this is a set um, of pots with handles and there's three different sizes in here can mama have that please thank you um and so this is what i mainly use to heat up our food in or these three pots and then these were also cups from my childhood. Um, we use these as our hot chocolate cups. And then also they're really good. They're, one of them, I believe, is marked for measuring. I had put lines on it, I thought. I wonder where it ended up. Anyhow, so we could use it as a measuring cup as well. And so that it double, did double duty for us. So that is what we use for our cooking. All right, so I think that was it for now. I just finished... Um, going on the computer and revising my camping list and so I thought I'd give you a little sneak peek at them um, so this is actually there's three pages over here this is I created this last year and I totally forgot I did it's a much more detailed um, list of the food that we typically bring with us and so at the top I have if it's and I, it's kind of in reverse order from what you would think but if it's packed prepped or purchased so I just listed things that we commonly buy for all of our different 
food type items. So I broke it down by breakfast, then there's lunch, and snacky things, fruit, snacks to go with the lunch, and then our dinners, and then drinks that we might bring. And um, let's see if I can turn the page. Okay, and then lots more snacks, condiments, and then my baby's food, um, which this will probably be the last year that I have to bring up anything separate for him. Um, and then on the side here is the store that I typically purchase it at, so that when I go to make my shopping list, um, I should be able to just go down the list by store and write it, make sure it's on my list, or actually what I do first is if we already have it at home, I just go ahead and check it off on this first column here, or I guess it would be the third column, but the closest one to the item. I say if it's already been purchased, and so I check it off, and then whatever hasn't been purchased, that's what I'm going to transfer over to my shopping list for these stores. And then if it's something that needs to get prepped, like put in smaller baggies or something like that, that's why I have lines there. Or say I, it's like a meat that I am going to pre-cook and freeze. Um, that's another thing that would be prepped and then if it actually made it into the boxes. So that's kind of something I did last year and it helped a ton and I know it's going to help a lot this year as well. And then the other lists are just, you know, our camping equipment, um, equipment that I bring up specifically for the kids, and then um, our my personal clothes um, lists and like toiletries and then things that I want to have available to us in the car and then things that I want to do before we leave like just getting some cash out putting our mail hold on checking the mail different things like that and then um, this is our kids clothes packing list so I just have it broken out so I can do it bit by bit and make sure that I have the things that I need and because I've done it in the past where I just start packing and I don't have my list done yet and um, I forget if I packed it or not. So this is very helpful for me to make sure that I have everything that we need. So now, like I said, I'm just gonna go through, check off on this list, things that I know we already have, and then transfer what I know we still need from this list onto a main shopping list, and then I'm gonna go shopping. So we are only a few days out actually from leaving on our trip and things have definitely progressed and so i'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see all that i have gathered <laughs> to pack it has grown quite a lot i actually spent after i filmed that last bit for you and i went out shopping i went out at 2 15 that afternoon got over to my first store ready you know to hit it hard and um realized i forgot my purse at home so I had to turn around and come back home and get my purse. So that was about 45 minutes of wasted time um, to get there, realize that, and come back. Um, I will say I had a little bit of a breakdown at home because that was <laughs> just kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back with how things had been going and just, it's been overwhelming. Packing for a big trip like this with this many people is overwhelming. I'm not gonna lie. And so I've had many rough moments already just getting ready for this trip. But we're pushing through and the kids are super excited. I'm trying to get myself excited about it. Um, and so anyhow, so I left at 2.15 that day. I didn't get home from doing all my shopping until 10.15 that evening. And that wasn't all the shopping I needed to do because I've had to go back to stores a couple different times over the last week. So it's been a big ordeal but it's coming together and so i wanted to show you the progress that has been made so far so like i said i'm going to turn the camera around kind of show you all that i have gathered here on this staging area behind me i have moved things around in our car because we have to move car seats around to be able to make more room and so once i get this a little more finalized and the clothes packed and things like that then i'm going to start packing up the car so i'll show you this first so as you can see it has grown quite a bit from what it started out as. Um, I did scrounge around and get more of those banker's boxes like I was talking about. So we have food in all of these. I have another one tucked away back there underneath this brown box with food and I try to organize it by meals. So I have like breakfast items in one, um, lunch and dinner, and then snacky type things in the others um, and fruit and, and like fruit cups and fruit strips and a bunch of different things. Um, and then in these brown boxes like this one and this one, I think. Oh, and then over here 
are more of like campsite equipment type things. So, um, uh, well, over in this one, I have a container of wipes. That's not the only bag I'm bringing. I actually have another one of those in one of these clear plastic tubs. I have some tissue boxes and then our pump for our air mattress. If I haven't mentioned, I don't think I have, um, we do tent camping. So we are in tents. My husband and I have an air mattress and the kids have these mattress pad things that inflate a little bit um, for their beds. And so we're bringing everything with those guys. Um, then I have these, a tub like this and another one exactly the same back there. And this has like all of our paper goods in it. Um, I try to do the least amount of dishes as possible. So I bring up a bunch of paper plates, paper and styrofoam bowls for cereal, um, cups, utensils. There's a roll of paper towels in here somewhere. I do have a few miscellaneous items, like I have some uh, seaweed um, strip things for my little boy in there. I have a bunch of Ziploc bags and trash bags, like the 13 gallon size. Here's another container of wipes. Then also in here, um, some empty water bottles we'll use if we go hiking. Dish towels are in here. Um, our skewers are in here. Um, what else? Lots of dish towels. I'm hoping to have helpers. Uh, more Ziploc baggies because we pack our lunches a lot while we're there to go. There's a lake we go to, so we have lunch there quite often while we're playing at the water. I ended up purchasing a second cutting board because I thought my girls could help more this year with food prep, so I went ahead and got a second one of those. Down here is that little, a little skillet thing. Um, oh, and then our tea kettle made its way down there for boiling water at the campsite. And that's actually more so for washing dishes and hot chocolate and things like that. Then in this back one, it's that first aid kit, um, cups, more cups, napkins. Um, my son is struggling over there with a toy. <laughs> um, just a bunch of random things. I think I had those glow sticks in there, a clothesline and clothespins made it in there. So a bunch of random things. Then up here, as you can see, I just picked up some boxes at Costco that I could pack in chips and cereals and things that I don't really want to get squished but are kind of awkward and take up a lot of space in just regular boxes. So I have this box here, obviously the giant bag of popcorn, and then I have another one down here. And then, oh, this box down here actually has our bread in it. So. So this box fit really well with our bread so hopefully it won't get super squished and then I fit that strainer just on top there and then I think that's all that I'm going to fit in this box. Then I also bring this large skillet in case we want to heat up anything or do pancakes. Sometimes my in-laws borrow it for when they do pancakes. Then you'll notice a ton of <laughs> bags with these ones have bath towels in them because we are planning to hit a shower one time during that time we're there, an actual shower that you pay for and get thoroughly cleaned. Otherwise, we just kind of clean up at the campsite. So I thought it would be really nice if we have the space to bring some clean bath towels so we don't have to use our beach towels that we've been using at the lake the whole time. Um, and then these are more bags of, these are probably blankets and I think there's a sleeping bag in one of those. This is just all bedding um, supplies, pillows, and bedding. Um, my husband and I do not use a sleeping bag. We actually bring up a comforter and a sheet set and everything for our bed. It just makes it so much more comfortable for us to actually have a full-on bed while we're there, especially for such a length of time. And in comparing the size of space I'm taking up with the different items I'm taking for our bedding, it's about the same size as having two large sleeping bags that we would have like zipped together or something for our bed. So this is just way more comfortable. So that's what we do. Um, down here are beach bags. Um, so this just has beach towels in it. This has a bunch of miscellaneous things for the lake. Um, wipes, diapers, swim diapers, uh, goggles, sunglasses, sunscreen. I'm trying to think what else I shoved in there. Just a bunch of various things that we're going to need at the lake. I have a bag of trash bags so that we can... Um, throw away our trash after we're done eating there. And then this one has like swim cover-ups and other miscellaneous things that we may need 
at the lake. Oh, and hats are in there. This bag down here is filled with diapers for um, my baby as well as the kiddos that are not potty trained at night. Um, down here, this bag is my youngest daughter's uh, aspirator in case she has asthma while we're up there. Um, I just bring that just in case there is a place nearby that we could if we had to go and use a um, electric you know, outlet to plug it in if we had to. Um, we're not terribly far away from someplace that we could do that if we absolutely needed to. Um, I don't think I've changed anything in that basket. It still has the hammocks. I guess the clothesline is still in there as well. Um, and then down below over here, so this is my trash bag bags it has grown from what I showed you. I told you I didn't think that would be enough. So I'm just bringing this huge amount. Um, then down here in these vinegar boxes are a bunch of canned drinks, um, some sodas, some juice drinks, um, San Pellegrino water things, you know, flavored waters, um, and then juice drinks for the kids. There's some um, chocolate milk on the side there. I just kind of combined it all. And then um, there's some kids' cliff protein bars, those little food pouches, a whole container of applesauce pouches. And now I talked about our hand washing station at while we're there. So we use these, um, I have two of them, these waters. One of them we will fill up and be using as drinking water and then the second one will be for washing hands. So we just set up uh, the um, soap container next to one of these and we'll mark on the top which one is for drinking and which one's for hand washing and that's how we clean up at the campsite. Um, the water that comes out of the spigots there at the campsite is awesome water to drink and use so I just used up the water here so we aren't packing extra weight with us in the car and bring up the empty containers and that's what we use for our drinking and hand washing stations at the site. So that's pretty much everything. I do have some stuff already in the car um, that I just moved straight from the garage into the car so I didn't bring it in the house. Um, but this is majority of the stuff we're bringing and so once I get this all in there I think I'll be able to have a clearer mind to think of the other things that we still need to pack and obviously going over my list. But right now I'm going to head upstairs and start working on packing clothes. This is what I have so far packed <laughs> for clothes. Um, I have one basket for each child. So what I did was I just went to each of the rooms with a basket, gathered the clothes that each of them needed, the quantity and everything and the types, and then threw it in the basket. And now we're in my room, they're all lined up. And what I'm going to do next is fold them and put them in these packing cubes. These are Eagle Creek packing cubes. This is not sponsored by them or anything, but I absolutely love these packing cubes. I've purchased these from their website, from REI, as well as Amazon. Um, and I absolutely love these things. They are super durable. Um, the, I like this particular brand. I've seen other ones and I like this one. Um, just the feel of them, it just feels higher quality to me. Um, they aren't cheap. Like one of these, this is just called a regular cube is $12.50, I think, for one of these. So you see how many I have. You see that was quite an investment for us. However, I use them all the time, not just for when we're packing to go somewhere. I use them like if we just need a change of clothes for the kids or to throw jackets in somewhere. I just like it because they're compact. Um, they are easy to grab because they have the handles. They compress the clothes to a degree, so it's it takes up less space. It keeps them clean. These are washable, so I just throw them in the washing machine if they had dirty things in them. Um, I just, I love them. And it allows me to be able to pack easily um, into less suitcases, multiple people into less suitcases because everybody has a color. So each of the kids has a color and then or a pattern, and then my husband has one, and then I have one too. So it makes it really easy when you're pulling from the same suitcase to know whose clothes you're pulling out. And then my husband and I, so mostly I just have these, they're just cubes, um, zippered. And, but my husband and I also have what are called folders. And so these are also, Vel these are Velcro. Um, and they allow you to put bulkier items. Um, so these packing cubes work really well for the kids and then also for like our underwear and socks and things like that, pajamas. And then these I use for um, shirts 
and pants um, and sweatshirts and things like that. And it really helps keep everything organized <laughs> where you want it to be. So I am going to work on getting these clothes into these cubes right now and probably turn on some YouTube videos to watch while I do it. Here is all the kid stuff put in the packing cubes and almost all of it into the one suitcase for all four of them. Um, I just kind of left it out like this so I could show you so you can see how it's divided between the four kids colors. Um, my son, I needed four packing cubes for him and the other three I was able to get it into three a piece. And that's just because I bring extras up for the babies because you just never know. And he's he's a boy. He is going to get filthy up there. So I wanted to have a few extra things for him in the case he soaked through his diaper in the middle of the night and his clothes don't dry out in time for that evening or what whatnot. You know, I just wanted to have extras of things. So that's why he has a little bit more. So his clothes, those packing cubes are stuffed a little bit more, as you can see than some of the other ones. So these, this is a big suitcase, so these will just kind of squish in on top right there. And then I left all of these out um, to also talk to you about. This one has all of the kids' jackets, and I have two a piece for the older two girls, and then three a piece for the younger two kids. Um, again, just because they tend to get things dirtier quicker from falling or whatnot in the dirt. So that's why I went ahead and did that, um, and I'm hoping, I think it should squeeze in right there. Um, this suitcase does expand a little bit. There's an extra zipper um, to help it to kind of expand. So that should all fit in there. And then these three packing cubes, I am purposefully not packing in there. This one has the entire family's um, swimsuits and swim bottoms, if applicable, um, and I don't think, oh, and rash guards. I have rash guards in there as well. Um, so I know I showed you the other sizes, that fo that folder packing cube, and then these ones I showed you. I have two of these larger ones, and they come in really handy for things like this that I want to pack, um, like all of our bathing suits and everything in, or all the kids' jackets, or like if you haven't seen my How I Pack When We Go to Disneyland video, um, I use one of these for all of our, the entire family, to have a single jacket per person and it fits in that and it works wonderfully when we're doing that. Um, but I did want to talk to you about these two packing cubes. Um, just to give you a little tip, this is something I started doing a few summers ago. Um, one of them, I think it's this one, has all of the kids clothes for our first day. We get up stinking early in the morning um, because we we live in um, San Diego County, and so we're trying, and we're going up north to Northern California-ish, um, and so it's a good six and a half, seven hour drive to get up there, and we want to not be stuck in LA traffic. So um, our, we leave sometime between 3 and 4 a.m. in the morning to make that happen. So we put the kids in bed, in the, to the car in their pajamas, and at some point during the day, we will change them into these clothes. So I have their clothes for that first day all set up and everything in this packing cube. So that is just going to get stuffed somewhere that is accessible in the car. So we can pull that out when needed. And then this one is actually for the very, very, very end of the trip. It'll be for when we are going home. Um, after we've packed up the whole campsite, we tend to get very filthy from, you know, packing up the tents and everything else that's involved. So after we're done packing, we wipe everyone down with some wipes. And then these are fresh clothes that they can sit in in the car for that six and a half plus hour drive on the way home. So you don't feel all yucky and gross. Um, so we have that for everyone. This is all the kids and then my husband and myself will pack our own separately. But that was just a little tip I had for you. This has worked out really well. It does take some thinking ahead and finding places where you won't forget where these are, but it makes a world of difference for me at least um, on those two days. Then I also wanted to show you these books. Um, these, this one, my sister actually got for the kids one Christmas and I remember this from my childhood. I absolutely loved it. We didn't read it to the kids until a few summers ago um, when we were camping. I happened to bring a few books to read to them at night before bedtime to help calm them down. And this was one of them and they loved it. Absolutely loved it. So now every year they want this book up there to be read to them um, before bedtime. 
So it's kind of become a family tradition. And I actually couldn't find my copy of it um, that my sister had gotten for the kids. It's somewhere, I'm sure, around the house. It might be under a bed somewhere. So I ended up ordering another copy. Um, and this is just going to stay with our camping stuff. Since it's become a tradition, I don't want to have to be scouring the house. Um, remembering where that book is to try to remember to pack it so this is going to get packed away with all of our camping gear and it will stay there so that I have it ready to go every year and then this came up as a suggested book it's a sequel to this and I have never read it I still haven't read it I haven't peeked in it at all um, so I'm excited to read this with the kids as well and see if they like it as much as this one I mean I love this one from my childhood and so hopefully this will be another good one and we'll have a new tradition and we can switch off between reading these two books so these are getting packed in the suitcase so that they're in the tent with us at night ready to be read before bedtime it fit and I didn't have to use the expansion amazingly and um, these are American Tourister brand of suitcases. We have two of them and I absolutely love them. They're, they seem really good quality, heavy duty for us. Um, and we can fit a lot in them. I really enjoy them. So now it's time to pack some other things like my own clothes and finishing up all those miscellaneous items that I need to get to. I wanted to also show you what I use for our toiletry bag. This is actually a duffel bag that I've had since I was on the swim team in high school and it has turned into our family's toiletry bag and it works wonderfully for that. So um, we just have a bunch of, sorry for the shadows, I have tons of bags but I have my, this is all my toiletries, this is all the kids toiletries like toothbrushes, toothpaste, um, hair ties brushes, combs, all that good stuff, um, tissue box to have in the tent with us, um, and then this is some of my husband's stuff. Um, I bring up pillowcase covers for our pillows. My husband has really bad environmental allergies, so he likes to change his pillowcases a couple times throughout the trip, um, and then just medicines and different things for the kids as well as for us, so that's just kind of, it's everything is in here, and it's nice to kind of have it all in one place and then on this side I have like things for um, the shower yeah that's shampoo and conditioner and things so just different things for if we go to take showers and then this side typically houses like makeup for me or um, sanitary item type things and some extra supplies um, like I have extra eye drops and whatnot in there so that's what this bag is, and it this also works out really well for us to have it, everything like this, located in one spot. Well, we are now T-minus 13-ish hours till takeoff. Um, it is the afternoon before we leave. We're leaving like around 4.15 in the morning, I think, because Starbucks opens at 4.30, and I will be there when it opens. So I wanted to show you this. It's all gone. <laughs> There's nothing left here. It is packed in the car. So I'm going to show you what it looks like in there. Okay, there it is. We actually, this is our second year that we actually have to take two cars up because we just cannot fit it all in to our van. So um, the kids and my husband will be in our minivan here and then I will be driving this. And it's, they're fairly packed, both of them, but I, there is some room at the top to be able to see a little bit through. There's a little little space up there. Um, but this car, the van has the, you know, the backup camera. Um, our other car does not, so I'm not too concerned about this one. Um, so yeah, we have our two ice chests um, and I barely fit everything in there. And then um, I, and I did not show you everything that was going in here. Um, it was it would just this video would be way longer than it already is going to be um so i mean we have our air mattresses sleeping pads for the kids um pillows blankets uh camp chairs stuff for the lake like umbrella beach chair things like that and that stuff is actually in here um so and then we have fruit and bread and 
yes, games. We bring up games. This is, we it just arrived today, um, so we haven't played that yet with the kids. And then this bag right here is a bag full of cards and different things like that. It is supposed to rain a little bit while we're up there, so I wanted to make sure. It, it's been raining on us at least one day for the past, I don't even know how many years it's just it's odd but it happens so i want to be prepared that we have stuff to do in the tent if it does rain and oh and a correction i realize this is actually my 12th summer in a row going up there so it's um it's fairly packed in there yeah and then i'm going to show you what the kids side looks like on our van how we've crammed them in So sorry if the lighting is bad but we have three across so the babies over there the youngest girl the oldest girl and then the middle girl is going to be in the back here um, and the seat kind of moves forward ish she's pretty small so she can squeeze in there and the reason why she goes back there and the others are up here is because these three get car sick and so it's easier to pass them buckets if they are here as well as it's less likely for them to get car sick than sitting in the back so um oh you can see and there you see we even have our single bob stroller right there there's that big bag of popcorn um we fit i fit everything into two suitcases for all six of us um yeah and so then i just have here I have an activity bag for my oldest and then on the other side here I have tucked in her leap pad with headphones and leap pad with headphones over there and a bag of snacks. Um, they each have a bag of snacks, they each have an activity bag and they each have a leap pad. Um, except for the baby he just this bag down here is just filled with random toys for him but he does have a snack bag as well they each have a water bottle near them they each have a blanket near them in case the air conditioning is too cold for them um yeah and then i also have in the front here i have um iPod set up with an audiobook and in this console there's tissues and a bag of snacks for my husband. I have something similar to that in my car. All of our charging cables all set up. So this is the view from right here. So yeah you can see there's there's some room to see out the back which is good. And then we also have a roof box <laughs> filled to the brim as well. So it's not a small thing for us to go camping. And then my car I'm all set up with, I'm not having anyone coming in the front seat here, so I put some stuff there. That box is going to get filled with um, homegrown tomatoes that we're bringing with us, as well as um, there's a fruit stand that we stopped by um, that sells really good fruit on the way up, so that'll also have that. That's that packing cube with the change of clothes for the kids. Um, and then I have some essential oils. I got this idea from, um, oh gosh, I'm going to, oh. Brighton from Brighton My Life. Um, love her. She's so, so sweet, so fun. And she uses um, these clips. Gosh, why am I not thinking what they're called? Just paper? No, they're not paper clips. They're clothespins. Hello. She clips them on like that and just puts um, a couple drops of essential oil on it, puts it on there, and then lets the air from the air conditioning diffuse it throughout the car. So it was a cheap... Um, good idea for um being able to diffuse something without actually buying a little diffuser for your car so i just have a couple oils in this little cup down here for me i like them everyone else in my family doesn't really care for the scents that much so and then i have my ipod set up with podcasts and audiobook as well so that oh the back of my car so hopefully i'll be able to see somewhat <laughs> it's all packed in there guys oh yeah see pack and play too it's a lot of stuff a lot of stuff and then here is a final look at my packing list so you can see that they are pretty much checked off um i just went ahead and highlighted things that either i hadn't packed yet or need to grab in the morning and i actually put all of that down here i just transferred it all to this one so i only have to look at one sheet while um, in the morning to make sure that I pack these things and then um, another little tip I had was on my food packing list um, I highlighted 
everything that was going to be in the fridge or the freezer so that when I was packing um, the ice chest, I knew exactly what I needed to look for. I tried to keep everything in the same on the same shelves in both the refrigerator and the freezer just to make that part easier. But um, this way I can just double check quickly, um, go down my list, and if it was something highlighted, I know it needed to be um, put in an ice chest. So that is looking good. Now the main things I have left to do today are um, go fill up, I have one car left to fill up with gas, and then I'm gonna braid all of my girls' hair. That way it's just super easy in the morning to put them in the car when we need to leave, as well as I leave the braids in for a couple days at least, and that way I don't have to worry about their hair for a few days, and then I try to just rebraid it a few times throughout the week. Um, so I'm gonna take the time to do that, and that'll take me at least an hour just to braid all of their hair. I, I do two braids on each of them, they stay in better. Um, so I'm gonna go get gas, I'm gonna braid hair, and then I'm gonna go through my fridge and make sure there's nothing that needs to get transferred to the freezer so that it doesn't spoil. Um, oh, and then I have a load of laundry that I just finished. I need to fold that. Dishwasher is running, so I'll empty that when it's done. And I think that's pretty much it. And then I can relax for the evening and hopefully go to bed at a decent time since I am getting up at 3.15, 3.30 in the morning probably to get myself ready and do all the last minute things that need to be done. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I hope that maybe part of my organizational strategy on putting together a big camping trip like this, packing for a larger family and doing a big trip um, gave you some ideas, maybe helped you to figure out how you can make it work for your family. I do feel like it overpack a lot, but I also like to make sure that we have everything we might possibly need. Um, so, uh, if you have any good camping, packing trip, does that make sense? Any good packing tips for camping, <laughs> you can leave those in the comments below. Um, I love to get um, more ideas and try to fine tune my own strategies when it comes to packing and make things more efficient. Um, this was a big chore to get this done. And I'm very glad that we are at the end stretch and that I am not stressing out right now. So um, I will try to actually insert some clips from our trip right after this so you maybe can see a little sneak peek as to what we actually did on the trip. So until my next video, I'll see you later. Bye.